Hello everybody, welcome back to our channel. In this episode we're going to be solving a Physics 7b linear transport and exponential decay practice problem. As usual, if you're finding this content helpful, please make sure to leave a like and subscribe. It really helps promote our channel. So this is the problem that we're going to be solving today. Uh, we have two standpipes and they have different cross-sectional areas. The right one is nine times uh, bigger than the smaller one. They are both initially filled to the exact same height with water and then uh, we have a pump in the middle which is turned on and then uh, this pump can support a difference in total head of 10 meters of water. The pump is turned at t is equal to zero and pumps from the larger standpipe to the smaller standpipe. And we basically have to graph the height of the left and right standpipes and also we have to graph the currents in the left and the right standpipe. Uh, make sure to use the same time scale for both the top and bottom graphs. Explain why you drew each of the graphs the way you did. Okay, so as you can see, I have everything written down here. So this is the before situation. Uh, both of them are at the exact same height and then this one is greater than this one. And then uh, once the pump is turned on, water is going to start flowing on this direction until uh, there is a height difference of 10 meters at which point the pump is going to be turned off. Now the tricky thing here is obviously that uh, if these two were the exact same height, I mean I'm sorry, uh, if these two had the exact same cross-sectional area then uh, then this would increase 5, this would decrease 5, that would make 10 meters of difference and then that would be the end of our problem. However, the tricky thing here is that they are not the exact same cross-sectional area, which means that, um, say, if this one decreases half a meter, then this one is not going to increase just half a meter, it's going to increase uh, way more because this one is way more narrow. So we, we kind of need to figure out how a change in height over here uh, compares to a change in height over here. Meaning if I drop one uh, meter here, then how many meters am I going to be increasing over here? So that we can start figuring stuff out. Now, uh, first we need to start with the relationship between both of the areas. So the relationship is that the area to the right is nine times the area to the left. So this basically in equation form means that um, area left times nine is equal, oh, I'm sorry, uh, nine times area left is equal to the area of the right. So this is basically the equation because it takes nine lefts to make one right. Now uh, now we need to figure out how this is going to give us a relationship between a change in height here and a change in height here. And uh, how we can use this is just to know that uh, even though a change in height here is not going to be um, strictly a change in height here, whatever amount of volume not high, but volume. Whatever amount of volume leaves this pipe needs to be the exact same amount of volume that this pipe gains. Now I'm not talking about heights, I'm talking about volumes. Say if this one loses 3 liters or if this one loses a 3 meters cube of water, then because water has to be conserved in this system because it's not flowing out, then this one must have gained three meters cubed. Now in equations, this means that um, a change in volume on the left has to be uh, a change in volume in the right, like this. Because you do need conservation. Uh, well, actually, let's just Right, let's just do negative over here because this means that whatever this one loses, then this one has to gain. 
In other words, delta V L plus delta V R has to be equal to zero, which would be conservation. One loses, one gains, and the loses plus the gains have to be equal to zero. So now uh, these are our changes, changes in volume. And we also know that just by definition, uh, the volume in this case is just uh, area times height. So delta VL is a difference in area left, height left, and this guy is a difference in area uh, right, height right, like this. But also we know that the only thing that is changing is uh, the heights, not the areas, because the actual water column, the cross-sectional area is not changing because this is just the same two columns all the time. So we can actually take this and put it outside since it is not really changing at all, which means that um, area left changing height left is equal to negative area to the right changing height right. And now we can actually use this equation over here, which is the one that the problem provided. So what I'm going to do is I am going to substitute this AR over here. So AL change in height left is equal to negative nine AL change in height to the right. So now both of my areas cancel out and then my final relationship is that uh, change in height L is equal to negative nine change in height right. There we go. So this is the relationship between how much this one loses and how much this one gains. Now, I know that, you know, at a first glance, this is not the easiest thing to read, but this basically means that for every meter that the right one loses, then the left one gains nine times that. So, uh, For every meter that this one loses, this one go up, uh, goes up nine, which means that uh, if this one loses one meter, oh, this basically solves the problem because the total height difference has to be 10. So this one starts at two. So it started over here and then it loses one meter. So this is now one meter. And then by losing this one meter, this one gained nine meters. So it went up. So if you start at two and you gain nine, then you end up at 11. And then the change or the difference between this water column and this water column is 11 minus one. So the difference between the water columns is 10 meters. So when this one drops one, this one gains nine, the difference becomes 10. And then at this point, this, uh, this pump is basically uh, done. It turns off according to the instructions. So this is our final in this case. So now we just basically need to graph this. So I have a little, graph prepared over here. So let's see. So our initial values are, so let's just start with the left. So left starts at two, which is the initial height that was marked over here. And then the final height is 11. So it goes up to here. And the midpoint, oh, we can just. Oh, 
What's the make? So this is going to be something like this and this is height on the left and then height on the right is starting at the same height but it ends up at one so it ends up over here so This one loses one meter and this one gains nine meters. And this is the final answer for the first part. Now the second part is asking, oh, we also have to figure out this I. So now obviously at the beginning, we're gonna have a certain amount of current flowing from right to left. And then at the end, when this pump you know, can no longer support this height. Um, it's just gonna get stuck like this. So our final current is going to be zero, but we do need to figure out what our initial current is. And for that, I'm gonna need to use my Bernoulli equation, it seems. So let's just try to figure out what my initial value for the current should be. So at my initial point, my delta p is equal to zero because if I use Bernoulli uh, say from right to left going like this then at the beginning this difference in height and this difference in height are both equal to zero so if you go Bernoulli from here to here and from here to here you'll see that the pressures are exactly the same since there is no height difference so if I go if I use my Bernoulli equation from here to here then delta p is equal to zero. I don't have a change in height. I don't have a change in area going from here to here, uh, but I do have a pump and I also have a resistance. So my Bernoulli equation for the beginning would be um, zero is equal to E pump minus IR, so my initial current is just going, oh, E pump divided by volume. My initial current is just going to be E pump divided by volume and then that divided by R. So that is going to be my initial current. And then my final current is going to be zero for both of them. Now, um, the reason why I have a positive side and a negative side over here is because we do need to graph the current uh, on the left side and also on the right side. Now, I know that because these two systems are connected to each other, whatever current is going out of here has to be the same amount of current going into here. And I also know that current is a change in volume divided by a change in time. So, uh, basically one of these currents is going to be positive and one of these currents is going to be negative. So one of them is going to start over here at uh, E pump divided by volume divided by R and the other is going to start over here at negative E pump divided by volume divided by R and then one of them is going to go to zero like this and one of them is going to go to zero like this. Now, which one is which? Well, this one has to be the one uh, for this water column because um, when you think about it, a current is a change in volume divided by a change in time. So if you're gaining volume, that means that your change in volume is positive. So that means that this guy over here has to be uh, the current entering the pipe, so I left. And again, because a current is a change in volume divided by a change in time, uh, this water column over here is losing volume, so it's sending it away, it's losing it, which means that uh, this guy is negative, so this graph has to be negative. And as you can see, even though these two guys are not symmetrical, these two have to be symmetrical because in terms of volume, 
this has to hold, right? Whatever one is losing, one has to be gaining and we need conservation. So because of that, these two do need to look symmetric to each other. They just need opposite signs to reflect that one of them is gaining volume, one of them is losing volume. Uh, so now let's just very quickly do part B and we're going to be done. So part B is going back to this scenario uh, what can you do to increase the time it takes for the pump to change the uh, to yeah to change the standpipes? Well, so there are a lot of answers. Well, I can think of three answers right now for this. So basically, what they are asking is, what can we do in order to, uh, you know, have this process be slower, to still have the process but to just make it like slower. The first thing that we can do is uh, increase the resistance because if you increase the resistance then uh, then your flow is going to go down. If you increase this then this is going to go down which means that it will take longer for the amount of volume to go from right to left. So increasing a resistance would be one. Another thing that you could do is increase the cross-sectional areas of both of these guys because if you increase both of the cross-sectional areas then uh, you're still going to end up with a height difference but because you're moving more volume than before that means that it will take longer for you to move that volume since now it's more. So you can also increase both of the volumes of water so that's gonna make it so that it takes longer. And then the third thing that I can think is if you decrease the area of the middle pipe and you make it smaller, then that is also a way in which you're gonna delay the entire process because you're still moving a volume of water, but if this guy if this pipe over here is smaller, then it's just gonna take longer for you to move the same amount of volume of water. So those are the three, di the three different things that come to my head. Uh, but I'm not saying that there aren't any more. I'm just saying that, you know, these are the th three things that I can think of at this moment. Uh, so anyways, we are done with this problem at this point. So as usual, if you find this content helpful, uh, you leaving a like really helps us uh, get this channel recommended to other people who are in need of these videos. So we do appreciate your feedback and we do appreciate uh, you leaving comments and likes and whatever on this video. I'll see you guys in the next video.